No one likes getting a cold, but getting a cold in space is probably worse, as the crew of Apollo 7 found out in October of 1968. There was a lot riding on the Apollo 7 mission. It marked NASA's return to manned missions after the Apollo 1 fire and was the debut of the redesigned Apollo spacecraft. The 11-day flight was packed with experiments, tests, and also some less scientific PR-type goals. Apollo 7 would be the first mission to do live TV broadcasts from orbit. The TV broadcasts were a bit of a sore spot for Commission Commander Wally Schirra. A Mercury and Gemini veteran, he felt the TV test distracted from the engineering aspects of the flight. The aspects that were the most vital to proving the spacecraft was up for the lunar mission. It caused some tension between the crew and the mission controllers leading up to the flight. Tensions that only rose once the mission actually got started. Not long after reaching orbit on October 11th of 1968, Wally Shira began feeling cold symptoms. By the next day, he had a full-blown head cold. And the problem with getting a cold in space is that there's no gravity. The fluids and mucus that build up in your sinuses have no way to drain. So Shira had no natural drainage for all the fluids building up and causing pressure inside his head. He took some aspirin and decongestants, but they only did so much. His only defense was to blow his nose really hard to forcibly clear out his sinuses, but this put him at risk for a ruptured eardrum. Shiraz's discomfort translated into a bad mood, one that carried through to the rest of the crew, Walt Cunningham and Donna Isley. Some versions of the Apollo 7 story say that all three astronauts ended up with matching head colds, but a more accurate retelling says that Shira really had the worst of it, and his crewmates fell under his rule. With Shira in the lead, the crew fought with Mission Control about changes to their flight plan and the ongoing TV transmissions. But the crux of the argument with Mission Control came when it was time for the crew to come back home. Mission procedures said that every astronaut had to put on his pressure suit and his helmet during re-entry in case the cabin lost pressure. This would give the astronauts one extra level of protection. However, Shira didn't want to re-enter with his helmet on. He worried that not being able to blow his nose for the duration of re-entry put him at risk for a burst eardrum, something he'd experienced years before while flying with a head cold. It ultimately came down to the fact that no one could force Shira, Cunningham, or Isley to put on their helmets. Shira said they weren't wearing their helmets and they didn't wear their helmets. All three men strapped themselves into their couches and re-entered the atmosphere without their helmets on. They had some extra padding around their heads to try to cushion the landing, but that was it. And nothing bad happened. Apollo 7, on the whole, proved that the redesigned Apollo spacecraft was indeed up for the lunar mission. The very next flight, Apollo 8, took the spacecraft all the way to the moon. And while the story of the mutiny persists and often casts the crew in a negative light, the fact is that their refusal to put their helmets on went an extra step and proved that the Apollo spacecraft could keep astronauts safe during re-entry without their pressure suits on. And it all happened in space.